Hello, everybody. We are welcoming Naya, a friend uh, of ours. Well, what are you going to talk about, Naya? Well, so today we are going to make a basic introduction on Kubernetes and uh, how we can do it on GCP platform. Okay, GCP already provides yeah. us to mm -hmm. uh, high maintenance uh, settings, so we can just leverage on GCP a bit on that. Ah, that's good. So, uh, a bit a nuclear catastrophe or just a system admin tripping over the cable. System admins have only one worry, is that the website should always be up. So this is what the talk is going to be about, how to never let your website go down. So a little bit about myself first. So I'm a DevOps engineer at Prometheus Technologies Limited. So I have previously worked as a game and web developer, also as the Linux system administration, and I've done research assistant at the University of Mauritius, where I have uh, done some data analytics for uh, some projects. And also as a hobby, I develop Internet of Things uh, solutions. So like uh, you can have smart homes at smart homes and uh, make your lights turn on automatically when needed. So I'm currently working at Progress Technology. So it is a gaming company where um, we have clients from abroad who can outsource uh, projects to our company and we develop that for them. So uh, before we go forward, a little disclaimer that uh, this is going to be a demo. Like uh, we cannot include five years of experience into just uh, 30 minutes. So I'm going to take some shortcuts into making the system uh, so that uh, it fits for 30 minutes. But uh, if you need more information or you something is not clear, you can always contact us at Providence Technologies. So first of all, what is our objective? But what we want to do is to have our application be replicated and our database also to be high, highly available so that whenever one of them goes down, you, you can still get your application delivered to you. So step one is how we are going to set up Kubernetes engine on Google. So first of all, we need to create a project in GCP. So we create a project. You can see that on GCP, you can press new project, and then you will have your project created for you to see. Too. And then after we do our project, we are going to create our Kubernetes cluster, the famous Kubernetes cluster. So we are going to use Terraform to do that. Terraform is a tool which allows us to uh, write, uh, not codes, uh, but uh, like a JSON-like stru JSON -like, uh, structures. So what we are going to do is create a Google container cluster. We are going to name it DevCon GK cluster. And we are going to, and you see that why do we have a location for the Kubernetes cluster? Isn't the cloud just uh, magic? Unfortunately, Santa Cruz does not exist, neither does the cloud. So, so it, a, a Kubernetes cluster on, G, on Google is actually hosted on different sites. So you can have Asia, Europe, Australia, North America, and US. But each of these, they are split into zones. So the first column here is the region, and the second one are the zones. So let's say uh, attack. So you can still have Europe or other countries where you can still have your service up and running. So what we have chosen here is we are going to host our Kubernetes cluster in Europe West one. Why have we chosen this location? Because it is closer to our clients. So if you are going to create your cluster, you have to make a ping from where your clients are, and then you can see which one gives the best result. 
and uh, you can see that here we have Europe West 1, but if you want to make it a zone, like not highly available, and then we can go specify into B. Like Europe West 1, it has BCD, it has three zones spread across Europe West 1. And once we do that, we create some uh, servers on our cluster. So we name our our pool, we choose the same location as begin, and we tell him to create one server. And we also choose our machine type. It can be medium, small, depending on how much you need, but we are going to go by the default right now. And if uh, how do we run it? So you can see our, my Terraform script is like this. So the GKE, so we have the Google cluster, same as before, and this, just these two. And we we'll run it using this command. Terraform apply. So by doing this, it is going on on your project and it is going to create your cluster for you. If you click on it, you can see that uh, it has created your Kubernetes cluster. But you have, you see that it has created uh, three machines for you. Why is that? Because it is going to create one machine per zone. That okay. So what we have done so far is that we have created three uh, servers on internet. the internet. But uh, you you don't see anything. You don't have your application or nothing running. So the next part, what we are going to do, we are going to create a Java application on Docker. So how do we do that? This is going to be a simple Java application, which is going to just reply, this is a response onto the root path. Okay. So we create our Docker file. We're going to use open GD, JDK 11. We copy our Java and then we compile the Java and then we'll write the command to run the Java application, Java test. And we build it using this command below. Docker build providence backend 01. So again, let's uh, show you how it is inside this one. So you can see we have just these two files, the Java file, and we have the Docker file. Just these two. And how do we create uh, um, show you this? So we run this like that in this folder. And it builds your Docker container. So now in this in the next step. We're going to push this. Uh, how do we hide this thing? Yeah. So uh, the next part is going to push it onto Docker backend. So we just write this command here. So it is pushing, pushing. So now you can see that on Docker Hub, you have this created. Like uh, our, our image has been created on Docker Hub just by using these two commands. So, so right now what we have done so far, so we have only pushed our code on Docker Hub, but how do we run it? It is just an image on Docker Hub. 
So now we have to write goods, um, 20 files to make this good run on our servers defined here. So we deploy our application. So once again, we create our Kubernetes uh, file, main.yaml. I can show you here itself. Right, so on this one, we are going to create a container, which is going to listen on port 80, because most web services are on port 80. And we define the name which we have chosen previously, which is on Docker Hub.io. So uh, by default, it is going to fetch the images from Docker Hub. But if you want, you can also put your own custom Docker repository here. And what we are going to do is put a label on the pods. So we are going to call it app label. And we just kubectl apply the command. So what it is going to do is fetch uh, the image from the Docker Hub and make two instances here. As you can see, that we have said that it is going to make two replicas. So we have two pods running on our machine. So let me show you on GCP how it appears. So You can see that uh, we have workloads, we have backend deployment, and we have two pods running on that. But again, you, as you, you are at home, so you still cannot view the result of the application here. So what we are going to do, we have to create an ingress. So an ingress is a load balancer. So before we create an ingress, we have to create a Kubernetes service, like an internal balancer to Kubernetes. So what it is going to do, we create uh, a service, a backend service, which is going to, to listen on port 80 and, and also it is going to forward on port 80 and connect to the backend on port 80. And then this is the interesting part. It is going to create an ingress so it is an external load balancer. And it is going to forward all the traffic it receives from port 80 onto the internal load balancer, which we have called backend services. So we'll just run this uh, command. And you can see that your ingress has been created. How it looks like. So you see it has the, the address. So you can you can now access the address on the internet and you have your response here. Well, so what we have done right now, so we have our pods running onto the back end, we have our IP created here, and you can connect with the IP and access the servers back end. So this is the response. The application is live. And uh, you can see that if you go on service and ingress on your GCP service, on GCP uh, platform, you can see that it has created backend service and also the ingress here. And it has also created a load balancer or that automatically by just that one simple command. So now what we are going to do is create a database now. Because, because applications, uh, most of the time they, are, they have to store database, they have to store data. So once again, we are going to use Terraform to create our database. So we create a Google SQL database instance, database size, and also we set the availability type to regional here. 
And once again, we just type Terraform apply. So you can see Terraform, you have the database here. So this part here, when you apply it, it is going to create a database on GCP. So you can see that you have your instance created for you by that command. So what we have so far, we have, oops. so on our database nodes, it has created two database nodes actually. One is in master and one is in slave. Uh, so both have empty databases. So we are now we want to create a user to connect to the database. So how do we do that? Steal a Terraform config file. Uh, you can see here. So we're going to create a user called devcon app. And it's going to connect to the same database. And we set the password here. Usually in production database, you are in a production environment, we're not going to set this here. But just for the sake of demo, I put it that you can set the password here. So when you do that, you can see that it creates the user for you automatically. So if you click on database here, you go on users, and you have your DevCon app user. And uh, next part. So now we want to populate the database with some uh, tables. So we are going to create a table name called department using Liquibase. So uh, before we go into Liquibase, so Liquibase is like uh, Git for codes. Is like uh, yeah, Git for databases. Uh, most of the time when uh, developers are working, so you write your codes a certain way and then the database has to be upgraded to match the codes. For example, if you have a department, you want a name and afterwards you want to add the address field inside the table called department. So you would have to do it in two steps. So the developers would have to write their code and then the, the database administrator has to upgrade the database and then tell the developers to push their code back online. So with the liquid base, you can just write XML files, which is going to tell uh, Liquibase that I want this table to have this field, and it uh, applies the changes automatically to the database. So what we are going to do is we are putting our XML file into a Docker file again, into a Docker image. So we are taking Liquibase Postgres, which is a Docker image. We put our host database and username password, and we copy this my change log. Let me show you how it looks like for the Luke base part. So we have just two file my change log. It is in this file that you can add change. If you want to add more tables, you can write table department. You can write company here, like uh, so. The more you add this, and the more changes you can have. And uh, yes, and the second file is just to take, copy this changelog file and put it into a Docker image. Okay, so this part, so once again, we run this thing here. Yes, so we compile our database, our image, and the same command here. Docker code. Yeah. On here. So now it creates an image called layer DevCon database version 1.1. And if you want to push it, we Docker push, we push the image, it is going to Docker Hub automatically. Okay, so what have we done so far? So we have just put our database image on Docker Hub. 
so it is not yet applied on any of our uh, databases. So how we are going to do that? So what init containers do? So before running your backend uh, pods, you can tell Kubernetes to run this pod first. So it is in this that you can make uh, Liquibase update your database as required. So once you run this, you can see that inside your database, you would have your department table running. Okay. So what we have done so far, so when this is going to run, it is going to create the table here. And it is going to be, of course, replicated on the most and slave. But, but if we want to upgrade the database further, like uh, you want to make a new release, you have to say the next time that you are going to use inside the uh, Kubernetes file that later you want your application to be 1.1 and your application and your database to be 1.2 and you just apply it and it is going to apply the changes and your application will be running in no time. So now we are going to see, let's say our master database goes out of service. So we still have this one here, which is going to be take the place of master and our pods will continue to run on it. And the second scenario is this server goes down. So Kubernetes is going to automatically migrate the pod into this one. And also the database uh, connection is still up. So the user is still going to be happy with this. So that's uh, the end of the presentation. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, yes. Thank you very much, Nayer, for your presentation. I uh, have some questions here. So do you have to use Terraform to deploy to uh, to deploy the Kubernetes cluster to Google Cloud? No? Not at all. Let's say, uh, for example, no, no, you just uh, go on Google Cloud. You can go Kubernetes engine, clusters, and you can just create your cluster here. Ah, okay. And Chitesh, have you gathered any more questions? Yes, let me check if we have any questions. Uh, and also, uh, yes, okay, let me continue on the first one. So uh, you can create it using uh, the interface here. The, so you can create, uh, so you can create CLI. So you can also create it using this command, the cloud container create. So you do not have to, if you don't like the web interface, you can use the command line interface. And if you don't like the command line interface, you can use Terraform. Yeah, the advantage with Terraform is that uh, you have a versioning of what is happening. So you can just have just uh, one system of you know, a developer just going on the system and start creating and deleting and you don't know what is happening. With Terraform, you have this ability to put it into Git and uh, Yes, everything is version correctly. I didn't know you were working at a gaming company. That's that's so cool, man. Uh, yeah, but I don't do game. I just do the structure part here. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, what are you guys uh, working on currently? You want? Can you share a bit? Well, so um, our next speaker, Stefan, uh, is going to talk more about. Uh, but uh, what we are working currently. But uh, yeah, so it's something very exciting. And we're also getting into 3D games and so on. So uh, on what on what platforms are you developing? Well, uh, 
I think it is Unity, but I'm not sure. I have to check with the developers for that. So I'm sure Stefan would be able to better answer you on the development side of things. Development. Uh, I mean, platform like uh, on the Android, PC, PS4, these kind. Well, uh, it is mostly web-based. Uh, web-based. Web okay. Yes. Yes. Good. But uh, also, we can have mobile applications. Yeah, it is in the pipeline to have uh, both. Both. That's that's nice. Thank you, Nayer, for the presentation. Thanks, Nayer.